Welcome to episode 305 of the Helping with HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims with HIPAA for MSPs. And joining me is Donna Grendel of Carden. Good morning, Donna. Well, good morning, David. You became quite peppy there. After uh-huh. your sneezing fit, you were kind of staring and then boom, you're very peppy. Uh, that's what that's what you do. <laughs> you put your game face on. There Get you out go. there. <laughs> <laughs> Get on there. Get out there on that field. Put some dirt on it. That's right. The show must go on. Yeah. I, I was <laughs> told put put some dirt on it more than once, and it had nothing to do. It was like my dad, we still got to finish working on this. You're going to need to put some dirt on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. Been there, done that. All right. So, uh, man, today <laughs> is just a continuation of crazy. Yeah. So as we record this, we've learned that the Colonial Pipeline is coming back on, and apparently they paid a bunch of money. We'll talk about that. Uh, Last week, we talked about Scripps Health and kind of went through a live fallout (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh, to show what's going on there. And um, we have some good news and some not so good news about that. Mm -hmm. We'll share that. But as much as we want to steer away from ransomware as a topic we can't no no <laughs> we just, we just can't, can't do it it's just not happening so it's been a while since we talked about ransomware planning so we want to give you some tips on how to plan for ransomware because it's kind of one of those things where um probably not a matter of if but when it's going mm-hmm. to have some impact on on your you and your business your clients your patients so um, be prepared. And uh, the fallout is, is great. And so we want to help you look at what things you should be doing and what things to at least consider so that you're not caught with your proverbial pants down. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Proverbial. Yeah. Uh, so just a reminder of the HIPAA boot camp coming up do we still have seats because i mean we're selling them like crazy i know there were a few more that came in this week i think there may be three or four left all right so there you go better get in there folks august 17 18 and 19 is the virtual boot camp will be via zoom and uh, if you want to know more go to the hippabootcamp.com and i would certainly encourage you to purchase your tickets now <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think in, in boot camps past, we've usually had everybody buy tickets the last couple of weeks. And I don't think we're going to make it to the last couple of weeks on this one. No, well, and, and often we have to go through that. Can we add one more? Because remember, we keep these very, very small. Right. For a reason. We do not want, we don't build it and charge for it in a way that we're looking for quantity over quality. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, and as we always do, we take things that that have happened since the last boot camp uh, in the news and such. So these things we're talking about now, most likely some of that will be uh, talked about more in the boot camp. And um, yeah, we update all the boot camp stuff. We do. Yeah. So, (laughs) so we do that. And uh, (laughs) so if you, if you came to the boot camp in years past, it's probably a lot different than it was before because we update things often. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have alumni coming and it's because yeah. things continue to change and they're continuing to build their program and they want, you know, you learn more every time you come mm-hmm. for many reasons. Yeah. Is it's, that yeah. when you drink it from that fire hose, there's a lot that, uh, <laughs> that you don't digest. <laughs> <laughs> Can't swallow it all. Uh, it's like those dogs that are trying to drink out the fire hose. I always love that. Yeah. Chase it around. <laughs> yeah. I saw, I saw a, a, a vid where it was like the t- two approaches to the same need. And there's this water hose putting water in like a baby pool. And there's one dog drinking the water out of the baby pool. And then all of a sudden you see another dog come flying through and hit the water as it's coming out of the hose. Just <laughs> And then it comes back this way. <laughs> so it's just diving up there, you know, just leaping in and grabbing the water as it goes. That's great. Yeah. 
Yep. <sighs> That's funny because uh, when I had the other dog, Moses, he would he would attack the water. Yeah. Um, Ziva runs away from it. <laughs> like, don't oh, get yeah. me wet. Don't get me wet. <laughs> don't get my hair wet. I know. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. all right brother let's all get right. this rolling all righty so here we go are you ready i uh, am did we tell them to thank our donors and share us out and please yes. review us we got a new review thing on the website yeah we do um uh, you have to remind me is a pod chaser yeah i think so yep so you can go to the website you can review us on pod chaser it's a, a different review service so check that out leave us a review and yes. as Donna said, thanks, thanks to our blood donors. <laughs> <laughs> we need your blood. Yeah. We need your listening. Thanks to your yeah, our ear donors. There you go. We need your ear. <laughs> Lend me your ear. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Time for the HIPAA Say what? segment. <laughs> so this week we're going to do a follow-up on the scripts attack that we talked about last week just to see how things are going i mean our big problem with them wasn't that they had a you know, ransomware attack they're a victim just like everybody else sometimes it's hard to remember that the businesses and the organizations that are hit by these things are victims of crime and we got it it's hard to remember that but we have to remember that um, the big issue, though, that we had was they were having major privacy problems with the way communications with patients was going on on their Facebook feed. Uh, good news was they fixed that. Bad news is that Facebook feed still getting constant comments on it uh, from patients The back to the good news because we got good news, we got bad news, we got good news, we got bad news. <laughs> back to the good news is that it seems that they do they are now uh, they pretty much restored patient care they're doing surgeries they're doing the things they need to do to care for patients which is great because mm-hmm. the patients were freaking out because they didn't know where to go or what to do that happens uh but i guess you know if you're down for a week and they're still down uh So we were talking about it It happened. It was a week when we first started talking about it. Here it is a week later um, and they're still down, but they're getting the patient care done. It's all going back to the old school way though. If you want medical records, you send a letter to this address. Mm. If you want uh, an appointment, you call the doctor's office and, and you, you talk to an individual to get an appointment. That's all working though, but the real anger coming from the patients is we still haven't been told what's happening. And now they're concerned, especially after the colonial pipeline, which we're about to get into, that their medical records are no longer private or secure. And in some cases, (laughs) they are worried that they are gone. Yeah, you saw uh, that on there, right? Yeah, yeah. So one lady posted, you know, I'm afraid that 30 years of my medical history has now vanished. Um, Mm. I I don't know if that's the case or not, but that's certainly a concern. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, you've got a lot of information in there, a lot of test results, a lot of stuff that you can't go back and just recreate. Yeah, and the and the patients are rightly concerned that this is a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, either they're gone or maybe we can't trust the integrity of them or they're going to be released to the public. Right. All of those. Oh, wait. Confidentiality, integrity, availability. Mm-hmm. Sounds familiar. I think we've talked about that before, but <clears throat> I am just thrilled to know that patients are getting the care they need and the stress that that was causing them has now subsided. Mm hmm. Because that was the the real, you know, moment of fear and how dire people felt when we last visited them, <laughs> when we last visited the Facebook feed. Yeah, yeah. I popped in there earlier this week, and um, you know, it's it was still a fallout, and people are saying things like, "It's been two weeks. When are we going to see our notifications?" And I'm like, "Oh gosh, you don't know how this <laughs> works, do you?" <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they're expecting to get a letter right away. And it's like, if they're down, they still don't even know how much the impact is possible. Yeah. I mean, just think of, I mean, I don't know how big the, the breach is, but it takes days just to prepare the notification mm-hmm. <laughs> to get it out. Yeah. And you you don't even first, you've got to figure out all the patients you're going to notify. And when you notify them, you have to tell them what parts of their data was involved. Mm -hmm. So you have to know, you know, what, what was there and you don't want to go everything we have. It got got. (laughs) got, got. (laughs) Well, at least I hadn't seen anybody post on Facebook. Consider this your notification. (laughs) No, right. (laughs) Oh, wow. But yeah. So what had happened was, but as we mentioned last week, when we were discussing this, I said, we have to do another ransomware. We don't want to, but I created the title in the notes right then and there ransomware. How bad is it really? Mm-hmm. We did not know that within hours of us recording that, well, actually it could have been minutes even that we would all start learning about the colonial pipeline ransomware attack that has occurred that shut down the gas lines to the entire East coast. And it brings out the best in people. It does. Indeed. It's like it, what part of good idea, how does your brain think putting gasoline in a bag <laughs> is a good idea? Somebody run to Walmart, get some bags. Yeah. Get hefty, hefty. Make sure you get the hefty ones. Uh, yeah. I just, and I'm surprised. Bottle. I'm surprised we hadn't heard of serious bodily injury or death. Yeah. With people riding around with trash bags of gasoline, which by the way, gasoline will eat through the trash bag. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, come on now. Did you not play with gas when you were a kid? <laughs> uh, right. It was just me. Am I the only fire bug? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it was it was a test. We were doing laboratory tests. The lab was outside, though, in the yard. I'll never forget the day I realized that gasoline eats through a solo cup. Not good. (laughs) (laughs) Things did not go well for David. (laughs) Well, you know, there's a lot of things when you grow up in the country where you're everything around you is a laboratory. I know. You know, yeah, you, look, you get you, to test and try things. We didn't have the internet and video games to keep us occupied. And so, as they say, the idle mind is the devil's playground. And he played a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember studying. And, and I mean, we were like, I'm studying the physics of how fast a BB comes out of a BB gun and goes down the slide on the swing set. And would the if you could get the BB out of the gun and actually have it, it would slow it down until you could catch it at the bottom. <laughs> let, let me just tell you, it's really hard to make the BB actually hit the slide so that when you do try to catch it, it will not go well for you, but it only like gives you a giant blood blister. Mm-hmm. Note to self. <clears throat> do you, you remember back in the, probably late seventies, maybe early eighties, they had the show on called that's incredible. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And so all these people would do things and, Oh, that's incredible. So they had this one guy who could take, I don't remember if it was a rifle or a pistol, but you know, to have somebody would have like a cigarette in their mouth and he would shoot the cigarette out of their mouth. Uh So I got the bright idea to tell my sister to hold a small twig (laughs) And I shall take my BB gun. Yes, my Red Rider BB gun. And I shall, as I have seen on TV, shoot the twig from your hand. <laughs> Apparently, my aim was not great. <laughs> and I shot her in the hand. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, I'm still reminded of that. To yeah, which I remind her, you're the idiot who held the stick. <laughs> <laughs> which brings us perfectly back around to, hey, go get some hefty bags and put some tr- uh, gas in it. You know? <laughs> yeah, my sister might be the person that would do that. <laughs> <laughs> you're also the reason that they have to say, don't try this at home oh, now, yeah. all the time now. Exactly. Yeah. Don't yeah. do what you see on TV. <laughs> no. uh, yes, but, I was that kid. Yeah. Mm. But the the madness around the gas i mean i looked at it and said you know i'm going to hilton head next weekend 
seven to 10 days it'll take for them to recover. There might be some gas problems. I'll fill up now. That, yeah, I, that I did was the same it. thing. Yeah. You know, Actually, I filled up. We do. I filled up before, like the day before it came out, I had filled up and, yeah. and I'd driven around a little bit, but I didn't even like, I didn't even go top off. I'm like, okay, right. you know, no big deal. This gas will typically last me a week, week and a half anyway. I'm not worried about it. And, yeah. um, but dude, these people going around and just hogging up everything. And it's honestly, it's not, and I've seen articles about this. It's not the pipeline being down that caused the shortage. It's people's response to it. Yeah. Just like the toilet paper. Just like the toilet paper. Yep. And again, yeah. I buy more ammo. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can't find that either. <laughs> oh, geez. But the, the big issue, though, is why uh, is the whole thing down? Mm -hmm. And the company, they haven't really made a lot of public comments, but there are a lot of stories that are coming out from pretty it, it comes from enough people that have confirmed it in the world of cybersecurity as well as i mean i've been reading all the cybersecurity coverage of it not the uh you know the, what everybody else sees is the yeah. news no matter what it is it's the cybersecurity coverage that we usually track because that's usually the only place these stories are yeah well they get they get deeper into the information you and i want it's not yeah. the it's not the 30 second you know, nightly news version or where they have to explain what ransomware is. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you know, I, what's fascinating to me is I can't believe people don't know what it is. Yeah. I, well, I talked to a guy yesterday. He's a business owner, owns a landscaping business. And his the first words out of his mouth when I answered the phone is like, business must be good. I didn't know ransomware was this big of an issue. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this it's been a big issue. Um, this is not even the half of it, but you know, we've just had some very, very big ransomware and breach things happening this year with um with uh, the colonial pipeline and and then you know the the, uh, the software supply chain hack with solar winds. And so just it's getting a lot of more pub publicity. But you know, you and I are looking at this going, it's happening all the time happens yeah. all the time this is why we have a podcast that's lasted do you believe this is six years i think this comes out it'll be like the official six-year release sometime around memorial day i don't remember how oh, wow we, yeah yeah so, so maybe we should change it help me with ransomware <laughs> <laughs> it's the way it feels like i tell you well, that. you know we had the conversation a while back and i don't remember when but we talked about you know we, can, will we ever get away from talking about ransomware or is it going to be a top problem every year? Mm -hmm. And and when we talked about it then, I think it was a couple of years ago, we were like, it's not going away anytime soon because every time we think that it's starting to die down, they create a new and better way <laughs> to do it. You know, mm -hmm. and we've talked about how they've shifted their business model many times and it's yet shifting again. Oh yeah. Well, it's like when we had the guys from caveat on and we say, okay, what is the big story? And it was <laughs> Ben's all about, you know, the, the law and the privacy, that's his job. Mm -hmm. And then he does his, his gig, but then we cut over to Dave. Dave goes ransomware. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all you need to know. Ransomware. But it, it is not going away. Mm -hmm. And, and I would like to point out as, so frequently occurs colonial pipeline headquarters in metro atlanta yeah it's always <laughs> yes i heard the first thing i saw i was like what in the world is wrong with these people in georgia <laughs> I, I know it's it's going to be in georgia and if not it's going to be in the southeast almost always these big things happen and i mean i saw it on the local news first and then went to the cybersecurity news so that's so rare, right? Yeah. But, but, you know, we've gotten all these crazy headlines, but, you know, colonial pipeline hack, most significant attack on critical infrastructure ever mm. was one of the ones that I really, uh, that one's uh, CNBC or Bloomberg or somebody. We'll have a link to it. Uh, but 
those kinds of headlines. Now, again, ours are the cybersecurity folks and we've got, you know, colonial pipeline, a global day of reckoning rise of dark side ransomware victims have been surging colonial pop pipeline. And I thought this one was very interesting. All monsters are human. <laughs> it's still people, mm -hmm. you know, and then the teardown inside the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack, those are the ones that I'm starting to really pay attention to so that we can fully understand what happened. And granted, just like with scripts, we're not going to know. Uh, you know, a bunch of it we will never know. Right. Um, but we're not going to know a lot of things. But I found it very interesting listening to some of these interviews with folks who were just fascinated. They were just totally, why is it companies don't have to tell us what happened and that why can they cover these things up? Mm -hmm. There needs to be a law. <laughs> 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 and, <clears throat> you know, for the most part, any question about whether or not there's going to be any kind of legislation about it, mm -hmm. it, <clears throat> it, it flipped its head. This this is flip the coin, I would say. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who who knows what'll come of it? I don't know. We talked about this with uh, Ben and Dave. Will it be the states that jump on this first? Will it be the federal government? Uh I, I don't know, but I know that people are looking at this and looking at things like this, and they're like, something has to happen. Um, mm -hmm. I I did see that one representative from somewhere talked about. You know, we need to make paying the ransom illegal. Mm -hmm. And and although it will be painful initially, uh, eventually these uh, criminal gangs will stop doing it because people aren't paying. It's all about the money. If the money dries up, then the way they're getting the money will dry up. But um, on the flip side of that, if you're a victim and you can't now, it, well, let's talk about what we do know, or at least what we think we know right now about the this particular uh attack okay because um from what we can tell and again it's only what we know right now it could be change mm -hmm. i am not reporting this as fact because <laughs> <laughs> who knows but according to the information that's coming out now they paid five million dollars like right away. Apparently they paid it like almost immediately. Mm. Got the decryption key. And how many times have we talked about just because you pay doesn't mean you get everything back. Yeah. Yeah. And let's say it's all works perfectly. It's still, you know, depending on the size of the data, it could take days or weeks just for the decryption to finish so that you can use right. the data. So it's not, this is one of those things people misunderstand. They think, oh, if I pay, I just plug in this password and boom, I'm back in business. No, yeah. <laughs> no, that is not how it works. <laughs> and apparently that's what these folks thought because you have to remember, well, first of all, just the way that it works, encryption is faster than decryption. Just oh, yeah. right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. It's faster to encrypt. And so they're able to just fly through your systems and encrypt things. Mm -hmm. Decryption is by nature slower. And then add to it that these guys have no reason to write super efficient decryption code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the speed that the computers need to be able to do this, if they don't have all the resources to run this stuff. And apparently the decryption key in this case, the decryption routines were so slow in doing their work, which I don't know what is controlling that. Is it the systems or that limited in resources, but apparently it's so slow. They decided they had to bail and restore anyway. Yeah. So $5 million out the window. Mm -hmm. And Pretty I much. can think of a lot of cybersecurity you can put in place for $5 million. Well, actually, the the other point is that they, remember, were publishing the data out on their tour site. So the $5 million, you still had to pay 
to guarantee that they would take down the data that they stole. Yeah. So even if they didn't get the data back, just the fact that they take down the public data that's that's supposed to be private <laughs> and uh, and they're not going to release this to, in any other methods. You know, if you if you take their word as being honest criminals, <laughs> mm-hmm. we're honest criminals. <laughs> yeah. Then I guess you could say that, that that's what you paid for. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe that works out for them. Uh, it, what was interesting is uh, Cyber Reason just did a blog post April 1st talking about dark side, you know, and, and all of them. They did that back then. And now here we are talking about it again, where they, uh, dark side operates ransomware as a service. Mm-hmm. We've talked about this before. This is not the, you know, some dude in a hoodie in a basement. It offers up the malware for uh, for lease. And in the blog post last month, they said they recently announced on Hack Forums that it had upgraded its offering, releasing DarkSide 2.0 with the fastest encryption speed on this underground market, they said. Mm. And it includes Windows and Linux versions. So I don't have to worry about it because I'm on Linux Poof, out the window. Mm-hmm. So I uh, I found that fascinating that they were following them just a month ago. And these folks, according to Krebs, that, uh, Krebs on security, they didn't surface till August 2020. Oh, yeah, they're new. Yeah. So this is, this is not the ones that you already knew. And by the way, several of the ones that we knew last year, uh, the Rick, 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 right. Whatever. (laughs) Still around, (laughs) still around. See what dark size should do is they should come up with a faster decryption, um, option. And that way they can do upsells. Exactly. (laughs) They need to think about that. Uh, but the big picture is in in his article, he pointed out that these folks, uh, they say it targets big companies and forbids the affiliates from dropping ransomware and orga- on organizations in several industries, including healthcare, funeral services, education, public sector, and nonprofits. Now, that's not exactly what it says. So for all of you in healthcare, uh, you need to know this is what it says, because if you don't understand healthcare, this may seem like they're saying healthcare, but it's not what they're saying. If you understand it, that's why you should listen to us. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, if you're talking healthcare, it says, um, based on our principles, (laughs) we will not attack the following targets. And then in that list, it says medicine. And in the after that, there is a little caveat called parentheses. (laughs) (laughs) That always says we're about to tell you a little bit more about that. And then it says only hospitals, any palliative care organizations, nursing homes, companies that develop and participate to a large extent in the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. That is not all healthcare. Mm -mm. So probably these guys aren't doing scripts. One can hope. Uh, But you know what? Uh, First of all, I'd like to know what they call a big company. Because they're looking for a million dollar bounties. Well, okay. Yeah, that's not that big of a company. Yeah. And uh, also, they did not include... Uh, labs, doctor's offices, clinics, MRI centers, ambulatory mm-hmm. surgical centers. None of those things are included in their dentist list. office, Dent- <laughs> <laughs> oral <laughs> surgeons. Uh, yeah, all of those. Yeah, uh, we could go on and on and on. Yeah. So they didn't. They didn't mention it. Uh, but we do know apparently. That this group, uh, what did they say? They it was really careful the way they announced it. It is not the Russian government, but they are people. 
but it comes from Russia. So basically the gang is in Russia and they make it clear that they don't attack any, let's just call it uh, Eastern Bloc countries. Mm -hmm. There's a list. So they only attack English speaking and Spanish. And I think they said, didn't you say they had one in Brazil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that includes Portuguese. So, (laughs) you know, one thing is if you don't want to take the precautions against ransomware, one thing you can do is you can, you and your entire staff can learn Russian and then you change your computers to Russian language. And so with the ransomware realizes that you're not using an English language and it won't encrypt your computers. Well, and you'd also need to use <laughs> VPN. Yeah, but say you're in Russia. <laughs> so if you want to go through all that trouble. <laughs> you got a fighting chance of keeping them out. You might have, yeah. It, well, at least from Russia, but not the other com- uh, countries. <laughs> True that. So, uh, but the big picture here is we're still looking at, first they paid to you know their extortion fee and supposedly that's going to get the information off the tour site and then they're restoring and got things back up and running but it's still going to take i saw one uh, like oil and gas industry person say that it would still take about seven to ten days to fully recover the system, not like the technology system, but the flow of the infrastructure system. Yeah. And then couple that with the fact that we already have some supply chain disruption because we don't have enough drivers of tankers (laughs) to Mm -hmm. get the gas out. Well, you have to have hazmat things and all kinds of stuff. So you can't just be anybody. You've got to be trained. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we have supply chain shortages. Ketchup packs, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Ketchup packs. Yeah. You know, I, See, we've had a part for our refrigerator door that every time you open the refrigerator, it goes because it needs a new part. Mm-hmm. That part's been ordered for six months, months and months. Let's just oh, say wow. every time you open the refrigerator, <laughs> you go supply chain, <laughs> supply chain. <laughs> Well, you know, if, if people weren't using their Ziploc bags for gasoline, they could put ketchup in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they should be doing is taking their Ziplocs and selling them with ketchup. Exactly. Just get the little sandwich bags, uh, fill them up with ketchup and sell them to the restaurants. <laughs> and there's supposedly like a chicken wing shortage or something. Uh, yeah, I, saw somebody, I, that. I don't know what they're going to do in North Carolina, man. You know, I saw somebody, we ain't got no wings. Oh yeah, you get shortage of wings for barbecue. That's like that's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we've got a lot of shortages going on. Uh, this was just adding to it, and it has brought things uh, to a um, to a, a when you look at the uh, with some of those the day of reckoning and uh, you know are we we're due for some sort of legislation and blah, 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 blah. It's, 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 it's coming. Oh yeah. We we aren't even covering the topics that we were going to cover about ransomware, which was a new report telling us how bad it is. A, uh, not a study that said 92% who pay don't get their data back. Yeah. Say say that one more time. 92%. That's a nine and a two with a percent sign. Yeah. Who pay. Don't get their data back. Mm-hmm. They may get parts of it, but they don't get all of it. And then you're not sure it's accurate. And then we were going to talk about a new CISA uh, alert that told us about a new ransomware gang. That's not this one. Mm-hmm. Five hands. But no, that, we're going to talk about this one. That's creepy. Just thinking about. I know. Some guy running around with five hands. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it, you know, the gang has five hands, so maybe it's three people and one of them lost a hand. I don't know. It's a, whatever it is, we can't even cover those. But it, we realize that it is important that we discuss what do you do when you're hit? Mm-hmm. You, I don't care what business you're in today. 
If you do not have a plan or at least have thought about what would happen if you were hit with ransomware, how would you handle it? I, I would say that, that you're being an irresponsible business owner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't, I, I can't No. So at least learn what it is. So we don't have to talk about that in every news story. So we get something new. All right. Yeah. So we're going to give you six tips. All right. Should, should we preface this by saying, if you think you're too small yeah. <laughs> or that, you know, IT has got this covered, you shouldn't worry about it. If you yeah. think those things you're already in fighting an uphill battle. Yeah. Um, you know, most of these people uh, or places rather, most of these places that get hit, they have some security in place. They have antivirus and sometimes they have IT and all this other stuff, but they still get hit. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a difference um, from IT security and cybersecurity. There's a, there's a huge difference. And then when you throw privacy in on top of it, <laughs> it's even, even more so. All right. So you ready to get into these tips? Yes, I am. All right. Tip number one, have a real plan, not just an assumption that you will know what to do. Yeah. They, oh, well, uh, we'll do blah, 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 blah. It is, it, I think, one of the most valuable quotes. And I need to pull it and just like put it somewhere uh, that we can always pop it back into an article when we talk about ransomware. But the president of the hospital that was hit back in the fall, I want to say, like October timeframe, mm -hmm. who, who said, if you had asked me six months ago, if it would be this bad, we would have told you no way that we have a plan. Yeah. So, we, yeah. And it, that makes me wonder when people say stuff like that, like who did you have involved in your, your planning? Because if you would have brought it in, they probably would have told you it was the end of the world <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, you know, we're always freaking out about how bad it can be. I, mm -hmm. But I think people look at us and go, oh, come on. It can't be that bad. I'm like, no, uh -huh. no, no, it can be. <laughs> oh, you can fix it. You just act like it's hard so that we think you know more. Yeah. Well, well, you know, some of it, some of people's understanding of ransomware comes from TV. <laughs> <laughs> we that. talked about this in the past where I was watching a medical TV show and hospital gets hit with ransomware and, it's amazing that within the 30 minutes of the show, <laughs> they recovered all the systems and, you know, just unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It's just like everything. It don't work that way. Yeah. It don't work that way. So you need to realize that, for, well, we say, you know, when we do the ransomware uh, plan in whether it's through the policies and procedure building that we do with our clients or even at the boot camp, we say, if you don't have a ransomware response playbook, a specific plan to deal with ransomware, not just we have a plan, mm -hmm. you need a specific one to deal with ransomware. That's where you need to start. Go make one today. Oh yeah. And uh, it, it, because the likelihood of this, you, I mean, I don't know how anybody could think the likelihood is not through the roof mm -hmm. and the impact through the roof. Yep. Well, that means you better have a plan. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Number two, tip number two, understand what your insurance covers and how to quickly open a cyber attack claim. <laughs> now, this is the one for me that, gripes me a little bit because yeah. I need to remind people that saying that I'm sure my insurance will cover this is not a response plan. <laughs> uh, I don't know that you know this, but a lot of your insurance that you pay for also says that you will have certain protections in place, certain monitoring in place, certain log reviews in place, or they're not going to cover your claim. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you might want to know about that beforehand. You need to go back and review your application and make sure you didn't embellish what your security program really does. Yeah, because I know for a lot of people, I know when I read some of that stuff, I have to read it closely because I'm like, okay, wait a minute, what are they asking me here? Because mm -hmm. 
some of it's hard, even for me as an IT person, some of it I'm sitting there going, okay, wait a minute. Where did so I know that it is not possible that most people can read this thing and fully understand what they're checking the yes, yes box to. Oh yeah, we got that. No, you don't. <laughs> you do not have that. Yeah. Um, you don't know what you don't know. We say that a bunch, but <laughs> if you're filling out those applications, you should go back and figure out what you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. And you know, uh, hats off to my clients who bring those things to me because it's always a very interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and no matter how much I try to educate, there's always at least one piece where they go, I thought y'all were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, at what point did you think that? Because uh -huh. we've never even had that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, th those bring, those bring up great conversations, but it, it just goes to show, don't assume that IT is doing it for you. Right. That gets into know who to call. Mm -hmm. How many times do you hear, well, what's your plan? And it, <laughs> well, we're going to call you. Yeah. Yeah. I, almost every time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we're that's call uh, you. That's not a plan. No. So tip number three, though, is you should have a list of who you will call. And yes, a physical list, because I'm telling you, when the crap hits the fan, you are not going to be thinking about, OK, step one is this. Step two is that. If you don't have a written playbook and a written plan to follow, you're going to be running around scrambling because the pressure will be immense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you don't have time to figure it out. No. <laughs> Every uh, second counts with some of this stuff. So some some people to have on your, your list, of course, the IT provider or MSP, uh, some type of cyber forensics, and you may need to get them involved. Uh, again, don't assume that your IT company provides forensics because they don't <laughs> most do not you know um, lawyers and and not just you know not your contract lawyer necessarily <laughs> no do you have lawyers that specifically can address these uh, incidents mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement and and um, that may involve state federal maybe local, local too one. yeah local too mm -hmm. but sometimes you call local and they're like i don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that yeah um so it just depends I've, I've seen local jurisdictions where they go well we'll do a report but that's you know that's all we can do um mm -hmm. so you, you need to understand what you should be doing because sometimes they're not gonna help you very much uh if you don't call the right ones how about this one public relations yes hello i mean because you're talking about some brand damage Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't say brain damage, brain damage. <laughs> yeah. Just knowing what to do and, yeah. and, and make sure that you involve leadership of the company, but it's the ones who know there is a plan and knows what's on the plan. So mm -hmm. that tells you two things. Somebody in a leadership position needs to do that, be mm -hmm. part of the plan. And then they need to be brought in to manage what's going on. And another important thing to remember is the forensics and the lawyers and the PR and all that kind of stuff. Those may come through your insurance company. Yeah. Yeah. You may not have a, an option. So if I'm, if I'm your IT provider and your insurance company says we shall bring in our own IT, um, I don't know how much I can be of service mm -hmm. potentially, but you're also going to have to get all these people on the same page. You have to, Somebody's got to be the, the person that, uh, is directing all this now now your insurance provider again may may provide this person but somebody has to bring everybody together this is what's happening let's do some information sharing let's everybody understand where we're going and what we're doing uh, and, and well you've got a lot of uh, you got a lot of things to worry about mm -hmm. you've got a lot of uh, that have to happen simultaneously all of these things need to be going on so i'm on these teams now that uh, you know, the insurance companies activate the teams and I work with attorneys and forensics and those kind of things as part of, you know, the HIPAA, figuring it out, privacy, security, because I speak all those languages. It's a lot easier for me to understand what's going on, but that doesn't mean <clears throat> that <clears throat> you just pull a switch and all that starts happening. Somebody's got to be responsible for dealing with employees 
you know, somebody's got to be responsible for dealing with, you know, this other stuff, but you've got to have IT that's helping. Okay. How can we keep the business running? How can, you know, somebody's got to do investigations. Somebody's got to figure out how you're going to start decrypting or uh, whatever. Yeah. Well, all that kind of leads into number four, which is know how you're going to communicate with employees, customers, clients, patients. Communication is a huge task, and it's also a huge problem because if you're not communicating, particularly with your employees, mm-hmm. um, they will communicate. <laughs> they will communicate with each other, and they will communicate with your patients, and they're not going to communicate the way that you want them to, nor with the information that you want them to. Well, we saw that happening on the scripts Facebook feed. Yeah, we did. We saw patients that were conversing with employees. We saw mm-hmm. employees conversing with other employees. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and all and- yeah, all this is happening. And, and you know, employees are the ones in the beginning. If you go back and look, employees were the ones sometimes that were responding to the patients about what was going on. Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, find that person and take the keyboard away. <laughs> Well, we saw that. Please send me, uh, you know, where is your appointment? And 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 the person's given all of their information about the doctor they're seeing, the date of their appointment. All, I mean, everything. Mm-hmm. And we're like, not in a public forum. And the, oh, OK, well, DM me. Yeah. Okay, not on. I mean, <laughs> maybe that's what your fallback is, but you should know. And somebody has to be in that position with a plan. Mm hmm. So that employees know what to do and you immediately start uh, providing information to the patients. Because if you just go read how angry those people were. Yeah. I mean, some, it's some still are. But, you know, you also have to remember, even when all this is going on, HIPAA doesn't fall by the wayside. No. And even if you're not in a company that has to follow HIPAA, there are still state uh, requirements for privacy and stuff like that. Depending on the industry you in, you might have some other stuff, but you can't just say, well, have them send a text or have them communicate over Facebook or whatever, because you might not be able to do that. But you've got to at least have a plan that states why you think that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. And without some sort of plan, it's almost certain that the privacy and security requirements go out the window. Yeah. So then you have another problem (laughs) on top of these problems that you'll have to deal with later because you're not going to have time to deal with that right now. And this is why sometimes when OCR comes out with those um, notifications of, you know, we're going to, we're going to let you uh, use different methodologies, you know, during the COVID um, pandemic, you know, you don't have to use um, the typical methods for telehealth. You know, we're going to use discretion and all that. It's fantastic that they're doing that. The downside is that oftentimes people don't understand that, that it is a alternative that they're allowing you to use. It's not the way you should be doing it. Right. And that's why we have never said that's a good idea. That's an exception, not a rule. Yeah. Because then it's going to be, um, somebody's going to say, well, we did it that way, you know, two years ago and it was all right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, and, and you don't get that enforcement discretion because you have a ransomware attack. Right. You know, that doesn't go out the window. Um, they are still based on the messages doing uh, telehealth visits at Scripps. They've been able to get patient care restored, although, you know, that staff is going to just pass out when this is done because we're on our second week, which brings us to number five. Yeah. Number five, prepare to be completely down for at least 10 days. Yep. 10 days. Yep. Because that's the average and And, it's going up. (laughs) Yeah. And, and the way that you reduce that is you have a, uh, a plan, then you will be on the low end, bringing the average down. Mm -hmm. The reason the average keeps going up is the criminals are getting better and the victims aren't prepared. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, let's say we talked about this earlier, but let's say you do have a quick response and, and all this, there's still a time frame in which it takes to either recover from backups or, you know, if you 
decided to pay the ransom and you know how we feel about that mm-hmm. the decryption time and all that but there's there is not a magic flip a switch you're back online and going process mm-hmm. it takes time because you you don't just have the process of let's get back to business you also have we must investigate we ne- we need to know how this happened how can we make sure that when we bring things back online that we're not going to still have the same problem uh-huh um how do we prove what was taken and or um, breached? Because that that makes a big difference. And that's why we tell IT people don't just run in and start nuking and paving everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you got to preserve that that um, that evidence. And so that's that's a lot of things that have to happen. And so getting people back up and running quickly is just not something that's going to happen in a ransomware attack. Well, and you can be prepared to restore and have all of that in place. And then you still have to pay to, you know, keep them from publishing your data. Right. So I, everybody's like, don't pay, don't pay. Well, when they've got the data out there ready to publish it, Mm -hmm. you don't really have a lot of choices. Yeah. So you're not paying, you're not paying for the decryption. You're paying to not release the data into the public. So and you hope that the payment works. Yeah, you do. Because you're going to need to notify a bunch of patients. So guess what? Number That's six. Number six. <laughs> yep. So tip number six and the final tip. How are you going to handle notifications to your entire client or patient base? <laughs> I can tell you how you not to do it. <laughs> Don't do it over social media. <laughs> Don't do it with postcards. Mm-mm. Um, the other thing that we've seen, uh, particularly with scripts is that people expect notifications almost immediately. Yeah. And we saw it today. We read through like, when are we going to be notified? And I'm like, yeah, you don't know how this works. Do you? Uh huh. <laughs> so you need to be able to know in that going back to number four, when you're communicating that you let them know that the investigation has to complete before you make public statements and, and notify patients of the details, you got to learn the details. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what all scripts is doing on, on that front, as far as trying to set some type of expectation. I know they're saying things like, well, we, we have to finish the investigation. I don't know that I wouldn't put some type of number out there to say it takes, you know, for example, it takes up to 30 days. Mm -hmm. So people are going, Oh, okay. This is not something that we're going to hear about in the next few days, just to give them some number to look at. I don't know if that's a great idea or not. I just think that if you tell me, if you give me something that's arbitrary, like whenever the investigation ends, I don't know. Is that today? Is that tomorrow? Is it a week? That's my next question. When is that going to be? Yeah. What what do you, yeah. Give me something. But if you tell me it's going to take four to six weeks and I know, okay, I might as well not even look at this again for another month. Right. Um, well, it, you're one of the reasonable people and the unreasonable ones aren't going to listen anyway. That's the nicest thing you said to me in years. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Moving right along. Boy, and, nobody make note of it. No one. Boy, and no take one. that out. Take that clip out. <laughs> I want to hear it again at the end of the year. <laughs> Just send it to him with a loop. As a matter of fact, I expected at the beginning of the show. <laughs> No, uh-uh. not doing it. Uh, I would like to retract my previous statement. I don't know. You didn't think that went through, did you? You didn't think no. that went through at all. <laughs> no, no, that's going to get me in trouble for a long time. So there's our six tips. Go review your plan. If you think you have a plan, make sure those are in it. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a plan, go build one and use that as your starting point. At least have a plan to plan. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't say, <laughs> you know, we're so busy right now. I'm gonna do that in July. Because guess what? Yeah, you'll get hit. <laughs> the, you'll uh, get hit like June 30th. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Well, or, you know, July 4th is coming. You, yeah. you, you, if you don't know, well, the, listeners, we got one coming up before then. Yeah. If you don't know, it's typically a you know a Friday afternoon or a holiday or both especially when a holiday falls on weekends. Those are the high times to get hit. Yep. Well, yeah. look at this. When all of these occurred, 
So what day of the week is March 1st or May 1st? What day did we learn about the uh, colonial attack? These are all, you know, it's not like Wednesday that most of these happen. Oh, no. Right. No. So May 1st, Saturday. So we got a weekend. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I think Colonial was probably hit on a Friday. Yep. So keep that in mind. And then you add to it a holiday. Yeah. So just what I would do is just Thursday night, shut everything down, take a long weekend every weekend. <laughs> 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 no, but you and I both know uh, that uh, what we don't know is how long these people were in place before they did, you know, did the ransomware piece they could have been in there for weeks who knows i know i saw a thing that said dwell time is plummeting this is exciting and i go look well it was 320 days and now it's 73 <laughs> i mean that's a big drop but still think about yeah. that folks people are dwell in your time systems is how long they've been in there just yeah, to be clear they're in your systems for 73 days before you know about it mm -hmm. and probably the only reason you know about it is because something popped up on your screen that says we're here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Time to pay. Yeah. Oh man. Scary stuff. Mm -hmm. All righty. That is our show for today, folks. Remember to follow us and share us out on your favorite social media sites and rate our podcasting app. <laughs> <laughs> As always, you can send your questions to Donna. She has nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and remember that HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. <laughs>